I can't even tell you how excited I am with the prospect of getting a roof on this house. It's been sitting here now for uh, two weeks, dried in, but only with tar paper. I mean, one nice little windstorm coming through here would have opened us back up and we have vulnerability, but today the shingles start to go on. So not only will I have that blessed relief of having this thing dry, but I am going to get a first look at a finished surface on this house, the color. And on some houses, like this one, the color of the roof is probably like maybe 50% of the color of the house. I don't know, maybe 40%, depends on the roof and the plan and you know how the curb appeal orients on the front elevation of the house. But I finally get a chance to look at what part of this house is gonna look like when it's all done. And that, my friends, is a relief. These shingles are special. First of all, they're a 50-year architectural shingle. They're heavy, they've got lots of glue, they're rated to last 50 years, they are pretty much as good as you can buy. Second, Tamco Building Products, the maker of these shingles, sent them to us. When I say sent, I mean sponsored, contributed, donated, whatever word you want to use to describe it, Tamco stepped up. You have undoubtedly figured out by now that making a video series like this is expensive. I don't think we could pull it off if it wasn't for companies like Tamco Building Products, stepping forward, sticking out a helping hand, sending a top quality product to be installed on our project for the whole world to watch, and it means a lot. Thank you, Tamco. Two thumbs up. These shingles are going to be installed by Roseburg Roofing. Roseburg Roofing is owned by Mike Morris and his son Brad, and you've already seen Mike on the job giving me advice about flashings and roof connections. It was really fun after he and Brad had been here holding my hand in the run-up to the roofing with quantities and everything to have Mike show up on the day they were delivered and look them over and explain to me the characteristics and the, the uh, really appealing aspects of these shingles. Mike has installed plenty of Tamco roofs over the years and was very encouraging to me when he pulled these bundles apart and pointed out really the, the uh, strong characteristics that are going to be on this roof. Now usually when you order shingles from a lumber yard or a roofing material supplier, the delivery of those shingles is or can be included in the material cost. And that's really important. When I say delivery, I mean that suppliers usually have the equipment and the manpower to deliver them all the way up onto the roof. The term for this around here is roof lining, meaning that they stock all of the product along the ridge and scattered out on the roof so it's ready to go at time of installation. This service is such a huge boost to the job. It saves so much time and so much just brute labor that in most cases you simply can't afford not to include this service. Now, since these shingles came straight to us from Tamco Building Products on a motor freight delivery, we didn't have a conveyor truck on site. But fortunately, we have our lift here, and we're able to get the job done. As you can tell, Roseburg Roofing sent a serious crew out to get started on this job. 
and so several different portions of the roof are being started at the same time. But on every pitch, you start the same way. The first thing to go down is a piece of drip edge. This is a piece of metal, in this case, two inches by two inches, that wraps around the edge of the sheathing to protect and cover the edge and create a place for water to drip off. After that, immediately next, comes a starter course of shingles. This is similar to a regular shingle, but it's narrower and it doesn't have the extra dimension and texture of the top layer of shingles. Having a starter shingle provides at least three things. First, a layer of full-fledged roofing material under the joints in the first top course. Second, a strip of adhesive right down at the very edge of the roof that has been securely fastened to the substrate. And third, a nice straight edge that looks nice from the underside and provides an edge for the water to fall off of and land safely in the rain gutter. My friend Phil stopped by to help me locate the plumbing vents that have to be run out through the roof of the house. So I could just drill and put those things in before the shingles go down in that area. This allows the roofers to install roof jacks at the vent locations as they work their way up the roof. We have a handful of penetrations in the roofing of this house. Four attic vents, three plumbing vents, two vents for bathroom fans, and two for solar tubes. Other houses could even have an entire air conditioner sitting up on the roof, in which case there's a big penetration. And just like our small penetrations, you definitely want to have that done before the shingles are installed. In other words, don't leave it up to your plumber or HVAC guy to install their own vents and then have to repair the roof. In general, let your mechanical contractors do their jobs and let the roofers take care of the roofing. I did this once when I was a kid. There's a whole bundle of shingles above me and I kept going and going. <laughs> There's special shingles, irreplaceable. I went through about four inches of them. <laughs> now that the framing is more or less behind us, and the finished carpentry hasn't started yet, you're going to start seeing more and more subcontractors doing the work on this job, rather than just me. And I'm sure you can see why. As you may have learned already for yourself, bringing in professionals is sometimes the least expensive way to get a job done. Now it's not always the case, in fact everybody has horror stories about when the opposite thing happened, but it's more often than you might think the best and least expensive choice in the long run to bring in a pro. Hopefully you know by now that I encourage everybody to learn as many trades and different skills as possible, but also don't be afraid of just hiring a professional. You're still building a house, you still get the credit for it, you don't have to drive every nail in order to get the satisfaction of building something. This roof, with the amount of labor and man hours required to install all these shingles, and with the rainy season in full swing, was just too much for me, and I can't tell you how happy I was to hand it off to Mike and his guys. I've been using Roseburg Roofing for over 25 years now, and if you were in this area, I would tell you that I simply could not recommend them highly enough. They're terrific. Now as you can see, 
These guys are keeping themselves tied off while they're on this roof. And yes, it's a little cumbersome to deal with a harness and a rope, but like a lot of other things, once you get the hang of it, on most jobs, it's not a big deal. The tow boards provide an extra layer of safety and actually provide the place that you stand while you do your work. And now you can see how they work. They're installed in between the layers of shingles so they can work without damaging the material or being in the way of the installation. When the roof is all done, you simply pull out the 2x6s and then slide the roof jacks up off of the nails that are holding them in place. Now without a doubt, the most dangerous safety item to mention here is not actually being on the roof, but getting on and off of the roof with the ladders. It's been a while since we made a video or talked about ladders, but let me just quickly say that they are, by a wide margin, the most dangerous tool on any job. So please go back and watch our ladder safety video. Maybe when this house is done, we'll update it, because there were certainly a couple of things that we did not include, especially getting off the ladder and onto the roof itself and vice versa. Just as important as watching that video, though, take some time to read through the comments and you will be blown away by how many people have had friends, family, or acquaintances killed or injured falling off of a ladder. So fasten the top of the ladder every time you can. Secure the bottom of the ladder any time you can. Make sure the angle of the ladder is correct. Make sure the ladder is not damaged or worn out. And extend the ladder at least three feet above the edge of the roof. And most important of all, be cautious when you're transitioning from the ladder to the roof or from the roof to the ladder every single time. I can tell you from personal experience that it is not easy to do your job with a camera in your face. It really gets in your head and it's uncomfortable. It gives you the feeling that somebody is scrutinizing your every move and you're not allowed to make a mistake or even stop to think. Now even though I know that our videos are edited beforehand, it's still almost impossible to remember that while the camera is pointing at you. I mention this because I want to give a real salute and a thank you to these guys and all of the other tradesmen who have worked on our house and have tolerated having our cameras pointing it at them. Now for the record, we let everybody know that we're making a video series so they aren't surprised when Nate hops up there right next to them, gets in their personal space, and points a camera at their work. But knowing it's going to happen doesn't make it any easier to deal with while it's happening. In fact, I don't want to make any excuses here, but let me make an excuse. It's just the truth. There were a few errors in the framing of this house that might not have happened if Nate wasn't there breathing down my neck with his camera right at the moment I was trying to compute some numbers or think through a process. 
Now, in addition to thanking Roseburg Roofing and all of these hardworking and skilled tradesmen who you've watched put on this first phase of the roof, I want to once again thank Tamco Building Products for supporting Essential Craftsmen by giving us these shingles. They are absolutely beautiful. I can't wait for you to see the finished product. This specific product is our Heritage Premium line in rustic black, and the color is perfectly uniform, as you'll be able to see. Now, I don't want to overdo it here, but they're just beautiful. In addition to that, they've got the best warranty in the business. So I really want to thank you, Tamco. And to the rest of you, if you're getting something out of our video series here, I would urge you to send these people a thumbs up. Let them know that you appreciate their contribution. And the next time you're buying shingles, maybe their product would work for you. In order to keep the pace of our series intact, we decided to break the roofing segment of this project into two videos. There's lots of information. There was lots of work. And so in the next video, we're going to be talking more about different types of flashings, about how the characteristics of the shingles glue themselves down and to the roof. We're going to be talking about ridge vent, solar powered vents, plumbing jacks. There's a lot more information to cover, especially around how we joined the garage to the house. You remember that framing nightmare? Well, it was a challenge for the roofers, but they've done it. Now that some rain has fallen on this roof, I can tell you it is watertight. And that's a huge relief because the building season is over. And I'm vastly relieved. We made it. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work. Thanks for watching part one of our roofing installation. You should know there are a few areas where we are deviating from the manufacturer's recommended installation technique. Now Tamco has some great videos on their website showing their preferred procedures. And the videos there are terrific. So for more information on what I'm talking about here, please watch our video titled The Incredible Asphalt Shingle.